One of the absolute worst things you can do in Rocket League is try to force yourself into positions that you don't need to be in. Now, what I mean by this is either turning and committing for balls that you absolutely have no business going for, or simply putting yourself in spots where you make it infinitely more difficult for you to get a quality touch on the ball, even when you do have space to do so. So in today's video, we'll be discussing how you can help yourself be more successful by simply taking what the game is offering you and not trying to do too much. And real quick, before we do get started, if you guys are interested in having one of your own replays analyzed, make sure you do check out my Discord, which is linked down in the description, as I do offer free coaching through there. Okay, be careful of this positioning. Um, this is something that I see a lot, um, particularly in players that love to be available for passes. But with these situations, I encourage you to be slightly, slightly further back. Um, and the reason being, if you're up here, if your teammate wants to pass this ball to you, if he wants to hit it to a place where you can like full speed run onto it, he pretty much has to hit it ahead of both of you. Because as you can see, like, you're getting dead on parallel with him. So if he wants to pass this ball, he has to hit it, like, up here. The problem with that is if he passes it up here where you can just full speed onto it, it's getting closer to your opponent. And they now have a much easier time to cut it off. If instead you're slightly behind him, then he can actually just send the pass directly sideways across the field because you already have the room to run onto it as opposed to being parallel with him, meaning that there's not an, as much space to make this pass happen. So try to be a little bit further back, because also what we're going to see is, yes, your teammate does score here, but watch what you're doing right as this potential save comes out right here. So you're now facing backwards. So let's just imagine, for example, that your opponent did get a save and like it, you know, bounced off the post and then landed back around the goal line. Well, you're now facing backwards, so you can't go challenge that ball even if you wanted to. Again, if you were slightly further back and you saw that happen, now you can just charge right onto it. Basically, this kind of positioning all talks about, like, options. Like, do we have a choice about whether or not we want to go for the ball? So, if that ball hadn't ended up in the net and had, like, stayed in the box from back here, we could have decided, do we want to dive for that or do we want to just stay back? From over here, we only have one option and it's just to stay facing this way because if we try to turn, we're going to get beat anyway. I miss yeah these are tough it's really tempting to go for these honestly with these what i would really recommend is yes it's tempting to jump immediately but this guy is already like gonna be in full panic mode it's okay to let this thing bounce and just drive that way because it's gonna land somewhere over here so if you had just driven this way you could have given yourself a much easier angle rather than trying to race the ball to a spot in the air um, it's, you, you can just recognize this guy's no, there's no way he's making a touch. Um, uh, I just don't see it because his ball cam is going to be doing this and that, that's not helpful. Um, so you can just play off of where you know it's going, which is back this way and just play for the shot over here. And if for whatever reason he does make it to the ball and challenge you, well, g good on him. Uh, or you can just like fake off of it once you get over there, if you know he's there. Um, but again, it just keeps your wheels on the ground and allows you to react more to what's going on as opposed to committing early and yeah because uh now granted this is a really hard bounce but if you had gone if you had been like over here this is a mud look at this it's easy like no problem wide open net you're good but instead you jumped early and then you took your the chances of you scoring you made it a lot less likely for, for you to be able to secure that goal even though it was open what i often say is just because you find yourself in a spot where you think you can make a touch does not mean it's the best touch you could possibly make um and again recognize the situation do you have more time to put yourself in a better spot if yes take the time to put yourself in a better spot this is fine okay so i don't know what i'm doing th this is a big lesson that i find a lot of players struggle with and i don't know why this happens but I swear, it happens It happens in the corner, and it happens against the walls. And for whatever reason, players see the ball going a certain direction. And they're like, ah, okay, the ball is going that way. So all of a sudden, they're like, so if the ball is going over here, my car must go with it. And I'm like, yeah, but you gotta think, there's a wall over there. So you know what the ball is about to do? It's gonna hit the wall, and it's gonna do this. And if it does that, you don't really want to be, like, here. 
Because what are you going to do from there? Mm. Nothing. Yeah, I, th I, th I think I should have just like driven maybe up the backboard and taken control. I don't even think yeah. you need to drive up the backboard realistically. I think you can just drive back this way. Um, like, what I would do in this situation is recognize that there's no shot that guy is going to play the ball again because he's just absolutely full cleared away from him. And rather than flipping into the corner where I know the ball is going, off the corner, the only place the ball is going to go is somewhere in the midfield. So, all right, I'm going to go back like this. Because watch. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that. Easy. No problem. But instead, you try to hit it as early as humanly possible. Like, the first touch you could possibly get, and you make it so much harder for yourself. Like, this is one of those moments. Like, recognize he can't get back to the ball. He's just given up possession. Take that extra time. Set yourself up for success. Make life easy. Um, yeesh. So you pick up 100 boost. What I'm seeing, right, is from this spot, I can see my teammate. He cannot see me. He has no idea where we are. For all he knows, we're like back somewhere in the corner or something. Um, and if we're behind him in this situation, he makes the right decision to jump for this because he wants to deny this possible air dribble by challenging it. Now, obviously, you're over here and you think you have a better angle. Um, but what you need to do is kind of like really quickly put yourself in their shoes. And from his perspective, all he sees is possible air dribble. Um, because also realistically, this is like a big awareness thing. I don't know why anyone's jumping here, honestly. Like, I know why he's jumping, because he can't see this. He probably can't see that he's come back down. I don't know why you're jumping, because, <laughs> um, there's no one on this ball. This ball is not threatening at all, so we don't need to, like, hard dive at this. Um, one of the things that I can recommend, um, to, to kind of make this kind of situation easier is you just need to, like, look for who's most likely to touch the ball next. And, like, before you jump here, is this guy touching the ball? No. Is this guy touching the ball? Maybe. Is this guy touching the ball? Maybe. Like, there's too much maybe here and here for me to be willing to dive. Um, I need to wait to see someone to make a move because I want to make sure that I keep my net covered because currently that's my job in this play. Like, yes, I could go for the ball, but if my teammate's in front of me, my job is to cover the net. This is... Not directly at the back post, but not so far up. Yeah, yeah, probably like the middle of the net would be a good place. Like, right around this line probably would be where your nose should be. Um, and then you can have everything covered because your teammate also has a bit covered here. Um, I, I'm more concerned with this. Um, and once again, this is just tunnel visioning on ball. Teammate, right there. Landing somewhat okay, it looks like. But also, there's no threat here. No, no opponent. Nobody here. So there's no reason for us to attack this as fast as humanly possible. Like, it's fine. We can, we can take a second. Um, honestly, before you go for this, you should look to see where this- Because he just went behind you, so you know he's behind you somewhere. Ish. Right at this moment, flick your cam to the right- or to the left. And just see if he's there. Um, and then by the time you flick your cam back, you would already know, Ah, my teammate's landing perfectly fine, he can just go. Um, but then instead you creep up, and now your teammate's about to go, and he sees you. So then he pulls off, yeah, yeah. and it's just so awkward. It, it's just all about, it, can my teammate go for this? If yes, don't go. Can your teammate feasibly get the ball? Yes, don't go for it. Just let him do his thing. Because, yeah, you actually allow your opponents in for this challenge because you guys fake each other out <laughs> on the ball. <laughs> what a pass by the opponents. What, a, What is going on? Yeah, Dear gosh, I, I what is happening? Yeah, <laughs> I, I was so confused. You can see... I, I, you, can, you can see my vis visible confusion. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, the, I, I think I can literally see your thought process. You're like, alright, teammate's got control. Let's see what he does. Let's be mid. Okay, the ball's going into the corner. Maybe it's coming mid. Alright, looks like the ball's gonna get cleared to the left side. Never mind. Still in the mid. Let's turn back into this. Gonna be, like, to the backboard, maybe? Nope, never mind. And a meet! <laughs> 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 yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> that's what my thought process would be there. I'm just like, what is going on? Um, this is why, again, I say it's just important to keep that extra space, right? Because, like, we would love to be able to jump on this as fast as possible, sure. But we have a one goal lead. So if we don't score here, it's not the end of the world. Like, it, who cares? If we don't get a goal here, it's fine. I would be more back here. Um, because do you miss out on, on an opportunity if the ball drops literally directly right in front of the net? Yeah, probably. But the chances of that happening are basically zero. And again, from this area, I have everything. Like, and then I can still wait. Like, this is fine. Uh-huh. Yep, still here. Oh, hey. Oh, perfect. Um, or your end, then if you are here and you don't want to jump, if you can't react to it immediately, you can just half flip and then get a free catch. Rather than it being over your head. So that's that little bit of extra space. It is okay to sacrifice a potential, like, half chance on the net. 
to be able to cover as many options as as possible. Also, what I mean with uh, playing too aggressive. Yep. Um, yeah, do right that. <laughs> Yep, classic. Uh, and this is, again, situational awareness. You're up by three, minute and a half left. Your teammate is in your opponent's corner. Is there anything good that comes even if we win this ball? Probably not. Because our teammate, no shot, is going to actually, like, be prepared to turn. Like, he's landing here. He's going this way. It's the last thing we're going to see. There's no shot that he's going to expect us to win this challenge and be ready to turn in the midfield. So it's not going to happen. And I I'm wondering if you get B here because you're looking here and you don't see this. It's possible, because you might see this guy land a bit awkwardly and think you have a free ball without seeing him. So just keep your eyes open. Be aware of that guy, because that's the guy that you got to worry about in terms of playing the ball, not not the other guy. Because also, we can see that based on where this guy is, it's not like he's going to get a threatening touch. Like, what is he going to do? Like, bang it into the wall, I guess? Cool. We'll just, um... Perfect. <laughs> um, that, that's actually probably what would happen. Um, or you'd at least have a shot. This guy might get back, but he's just gonna boom this thing into the wall. You could just fake challenge it, be in the midfield when it bounces back in, and then shoot. Yeah, uh, that would be a free ball. Um, instead, your teammate now has to try to buy time for you. It's fine, patience, yeah. Um, right here, honestly, just be careful with this. I don't think you need to flip here. Um, this is a very, very small thing, right? Like, oh, I, I flipped in, a, in, in the midfield, who cares? Um, the reason I say you don't need to flip here is because the chances of this guy booming this thing on target faster than you could, like, boost back to is basically zero. Um, and also, we don't want to completely leave this play with our teammate in such an awkward spot because he's, you know, facing that way, waiting for this boost. Um, which I think he's just gotten, which is great. <laughs> but he's literally not in a spot to really make a play on this ball. Um, so we'd like to kind of stay more in a spot where we can impact the play if need be. But, but yeah, because if we if we leave, like, our teammate really can't go, and now we're just, again, giving up all this all this space for no reason. Um, generally, I like to say if a, if a touch is about to happen on the ball, unless you know exactly where it's going, don't leave the ground um, in any way, shape, or form. Don't flip, don't, don't boost, don't use any resources until you know where it's going. Because, yeah, you're flipping out of this play, and it's like, what if, what if this ball had just, like, gone there? <laughs> like, yeah, maybe our teammate goes, but would have been real nice if we could have just done that. <laughs> Instead of being in the yeah, air like, when this is happening. I, I think, like, if I don't really think of my flips as a resource, if you know what I mean. I just think, like, oh, I'm not supersonic, gotta go fast, <laughs> yay. It's, it's one of the things that <laughs> and, I love to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Going going fast yeah. is great, as long as there's a reason to do it. One of the, one of the things that I, I tell pretty much everybody I coach is, if you ever are going to use boost, if you ever are going to use a flip... Those are basically the two resources. Everyone always likes to say, oh, boost is the only resource in the game. It's like, technically, yes, because it's the only thing you can actually collect. But a flip is just as much of a resource because you only want to use it when there's actually a reason to. Um, so one of the exercises that I like to recommend is go into your own replays and just look at all the times you're flipping around the field. If at any point you look at a flip, you should be able to ask yourself why you're doing it. And there should be a very obvious reason. I'm like, oh, the ball's over there, and I'm the first man up, and I want to close out space and get there fast. That makes sense. If the answer is, because I felt like it, because going fast feels good, you probably shouldn't be flipping there. Um, it's pro <laughs> You're probably just wasting movement um, and taking yourself off the ground and limiting your mobility uh, just for the sake of being able to flip. Um, and then, uh, what um, what is going on here? <laughs> um, this is when we go back to time and score, right? If you're, like, down a goal with, like, 30 seconds left, Sure. Why the heck not? Do we need to score? No. Not really. N not really, no. So why are we trying to push the ball into their half as quickly as possible? What we want to avoid, right, is our teammates currently facing this way. Like, yes, if we pop this thing up, could he turn and could he jump? Sure. But we also have no idea how much boost this guy has. Obviously, we do in the replay. But he could have, like, full boost back there. And if we just pop this ball downfield and he jumps for it, now it's possible that we're just hanging our teammate out to dry um, for no reason when we literally have a completely free ball in our corner that we could just take a crap ton of time off the clock. Because this guy's out of the play, this guy's all the way back in their half. Just let this thing bounce, catch it, up the wall you go, full control down the field, you're buying like 10 seconds off this clock, um, rather than doing something that could potentially give the ball away to your opponents. Because luckily, your teammate is ready for it. But if he hadn't been, that, guy's all, that guy was ready to jump. He had actually just gotten boost and was ready to jump. Um, I think my teammate also dropped me right past for this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, like I said, if you were, if you needed a goal, it's great. I mean, it's great that it works. Like, it's a good play. It's just situationally, did we need to do it? 
Um, it's just about being smart with our decisions, because could that have ended poorly? Absolutely, if our teammate wasn't actually prepared for it. So, as you guys can see, Rocket League really is a simple game. And you can do a lot of things to make the game easy for yourself if you actually look for those opportunities. If you try to force yourself into the play, or you accidentally force yourself into an awkward spot, you all of a sudden massively limit your effectiveness and make the game far more difficult for yourself. So make sure in your own games you really focus on everything that's going on around the field and try as much as you can to just play off what the game is giving you. Of course, thank you everybody so much for watching. I really do appreciate each and every one of you who made it to this point in the video, and I do hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you're interested in seeing some more Rocket League coaching content, please consider clicking that subscribe button right down below. As with each and every video, we strive to help you guys improve just a little bit more at Rocket League. And again, if you're interested in some one-on-one -on -one coaching, or if you perhaps would just like to be a bit more involved in the community we're building here, feel free to join my Discord, which I'll have again linked down in the description. And as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. See you later, guys.